Good morning. So we are continuing on with our learning how to and why to detox, right? So today we're going to talk about types of toxins. Um, so the types of toxins to be aware of um, are heavy metals, pollutants such as pesticides, uh, bacterial, virals, um, so this can be, it can manifest in candida and yeast in our system, um, energetic. There are tower waves, cells, microwaves, you know, anything that is electronical, uh, emotional, anger, trauma, unforgiveness, negative emotions, those all can become toxic within our system. Food, um, and we're going to go into the detail of the food, but food that is GMO, hybrids, uh, chemical packaged, and then environmental, things like the, our carpets and the glues to be able to put down our carpet and our flooring, uh, gas, car exhaust, um, cleaning supplies, paints, so much more, right? So the, these are all toxins that we, we can't get away from a lot of them. There are some of them that we can't control, but some of them we can. Some we can minimize, but I was reading a study about how babies in their umbilical cord, when they're, you know, born, and they studied, they, they did some tests on the umbilical cord, and um, babies are already toxic. They are inundated with, it was like 300 something, you know, toxic load or something. I can't remember exactly what the study was, but it was crazy for them to already have a toxic load in their systems. They're coming out with a toxic load. So it's, you know, if they're coming out with toxins, then we can't think that we're not being inundated, right? So, that's why it's it's important for us to be able to be mindful to take care of ourselves and to nurture ourselves. Um, so, food. This is an area that we can control our toxic load, right? So, the 11 foods that we're going to during our um, restoring cleanse to, um, detox, the 11 foods that we're going to try to really stay away from and to keep out of our system for 30 days so that we can then, if we choose to reintroduce them, we can have a really good feedback from our body about, oh, that really does make me feel yucky, or oh, that does create some pain. You know, we can have that excellent feedback by us abstaining for 30 days from these foods. So um, the 11 foods that we will stay away from during the detox are GMOs, um, especially those from corn, soy, and we really should stay away from corn and soy and all that stuff anyways, because corn is, um, it can spike our insulin, any corn products, um, it can spike our insulin, it can create inflammation, uh, soy, especially for us as women, it can um, uh, mimic estrogen in our body, so it then makes our body's estrogen not do its job the way it should. Uh, processed grains, so cereals, breads, even those that are gluten-free, it's still processed. So it's not, you know, the best of choice for our body. Alcohol and wine, uh, we will be staying away from. Um, even wine, I know it's fermented, it can be good, it can actually have some, you know, um, benefits and everything, but the thing is, alcohol is toxin to your body. It is, um, when we put uh, alcohol in our body, even a small glass, our body can only do certain things at one time. Um, and so, let's so say we're eating, and so our body should be trying to focus on digesting, right? But when we start to drink something that is alcoholic, our body says, oh, wait a minute, something toxic is entering it, and so it stops what it was doing so that it can process out or it wants to process out the toxin of the alcohol. So that's why, you know, things can get kind of confusing for our body. So alcohol just kind of, you know, by taking it out for the 30 days, it allows our body to take a break and it then um, gives our liver a chance to be able to do what it needs to do. Um, so the fourth food is gonna be soda, energy, drinks, anything highly caffeinated. Um, coffee, all that stuff, because again, caffeine can really mess with our um, our natural rhythm of our body, um, and it can be highly addictive. Some of us are extremely sensitive to caffeine. Um, the only caffeine that I can really have is in green tea, um, maybe a sip of coffee from time to time, 
um, but that's like we're talking truly a sip. Um, so I predominantly stay away from caffeine other than in green tea, but even with that, I will cycle it um, because I can notice uh, how it starts affecting me if I have too much um, caffeinated green tea in a row, too many days in a row. So if you're really addicted to sodas and or coffee or energy drinks, be thinking about this week and next week starting to wean yourself. So let's say you normally have two sodas. So then the rest of this week, go down to one soda. And when you're finding yourself really wanting to be able to have a boost, um, go to your peppermint. Put some peppermint and wild orange in a glass, um, maybe even a drop of stevia if you want it to be able to be a little bit sweet, swish it up and drink it down. And it'll give you some really great energy, it'll make you feel good, and it will be natural rather than having that, you know, those ups and downs and crashes. Um, so the fifth food that we're going to stay away from is processed foods. So anything in a package. So think Whole30. Any of you have heard of the Whole30 program? We're going to be focusing on real food, right? We're going to be focusing on fruits and vegetables and some meat. We'll talk about that a little bit more tomorrow. Um, but we're going to be focusing on nature, on what God gave us, right? And so if we want to make cookies, then we're going to think about the ingredients that are whole food ingredients to be able to make those cookies. Um, if we want to make, and that's the cool thing, is we can do really fun, tasty things even on this detox, and that's what we're gonna do. Um, so that fifth thing was processed foods, right? The sixth is low quality um, supplements that usually have fillers and junk and all that stuff. So the supplements that you know are high quality are doTERRA's. Um, you know that there's no fillers, there's, um, that they go through lots of rigorous testing and all that stuff. So everything that you're going to be ordering that is prepared and planned for this uh, restore and 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 cleanse detox, you're not going to have to worry about having you know a low quality supplement. Now let's say there's other supplements that you like. I have to get uh, B12 in addition to what I get usually with a DoTerra. So um, I make sure again it's a liquid. It's um, uh, the methyl. Uh, it's meth something, meth, methyl something. So it's it's a really high quality uh, B12 um, with no fillers, no junk. Um, and I'll make sure and I'll share it um, in the link in the, the comments and everything so that you know the different types. So, you know, be your own investigator. Make sure that um, if you do get supplements, um, any other vitamins and supplements, minerals, you know, even our magnesium, right? Um, that it doesn't have any fillers, that it's, you know, good quality, clean choices. Because that's something that our body will have to process out because um, those fillers are toxic to our body. Um, so number seven, artificial sweeteners. Those are just not good for our body. We don't even need to go there. <laughs> They're just, there's, we, we all have seen the studies, sucralose, um, uh, aspartame, um, Anything that is, you know, just not the naturalist sweeteners that we have are monk fruit um, and stevia and xylitol that don't create insulin spikes. But even xylitol can have some surges for some people, some people who are really sensitive. Um, so I'm really going to strongly encourage you to try to, you know, enjoy this next 30 days that are going to be about our real food. And tasting the sweetness in carrots again, the sweetness in tomatoes again, um, and maybe using a little bit of stevia from you know a little bit here and there, and monk fruit a little bit here and there. Um, and if you really want to be able to use uh, another sweet, there's some other natural sweeteners that if you're not too sensitive to your insulin, so things like um, manuka honey, which has some good uh, antibacterial stuff that helps keep candida um, actually down. Um, and so it just a little bit goes a long way. Um, it's actually a therapeutic honey. So it's just, you know, a teaspoon a day and it just, it can satisfy that little sweet tooth. Um, also, uh, trying to think, um, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely talk more about different sweeters and all that stuff uh, tomorrow. But so just remember that number seven of the 11 foods to stay away from is um, the the artificial sweeteners. 
So number eight is animals raised in stressful environments and hormones. Um, why does that matter? You know, what's the big deal? When animals are not comfortable in their environment, they're putting off a stress hormone. I love how my husband talks about when he goes hunting, how he wants to get a particular type of shot. Um, he wants a shot when he shoots a deer to be able to have it to where it brings that deer down fast and hard. And the reason is because if that deer continues to run, if his shot is not such a clean shot straight through the heart or um, the head, however it is that he, that he wants it to be, um, I'm not quite sure, but if it's not a clean shot and it doesn't bring that deer down fast, that deer is gonna continue to run and it's gonna, stop, it's gonna start um, dumping cortisol, it's gonna start dumping hormones into the body of that deer and that changes the taste of the meat which then also means that we're gonna get more of that hormone. Now this is a natural animal. This is not an animal that is being put in you know, a stressful situation. Um, so it's a clean meat. Um, so if that is even in a hunting environment of being mindful of how to make sure that a natural, <clears throat> excuse me, how an animal doesn't dump hormones in a natural environment, could you imagine with the um, all of the crowded cagings and um, feedlots and different things like that where those animals are all over each other um, there's just there's just different so many different situations and they're not happy they're they're emotional constantly then that is gonna affect their meat and that's not even taking into consideration if they've you know, been injected with any hormones or back, um, uh, shots to be able to keep them healthy, right? So everything that goes in them then goes in us. So we want to be able to not partake in that as well so that we can continue to detox our body. So again, number eight is trying to stay away from animals that are raised in stressful environments and that are injected with hormones and stuff like that. Um, and tomorrow I will talk about really great meat choices, uh, protein sources and choices um, that is not gonna bust your budget, trust me. Um, so number nine, refined sugars, even fruit sugars. So sugars we know can create bacteria and environments in our gut that aren't always so great. It also can create spikes and surges with our insulin. Um, so we're gonna stay away from any of the whites, right? All the white sugars, um, but also even some of the higher sugar content fruit, especially in the very beginning part. We stick to, to berries um, because they're lower in sugar and then therefore you can then kind of tweak and, de and decide what your load of uh, fruit is that's, that your body can handle and all that stuff. And again, remember this isn't perfect. I don't expect you to be perfect during the 30-day detox. I want you to love yourself. This is about taking care of yourself and having self-care and self-love. Um, so it is a process, right? So those of you who are new to detox, detox and have never done a detox before, um, we'll t be talking Friday about some of the, the ebbs and flows and the, the ups and downs that can come with detoxing and all that stuff and what to expect from yourself and how to be graceful to yourself. Uh, number 10, processed oils. So the only oils that I ever use in my house are coconut oil, uh, olive oil, and um, avocado oil. Those are pure, those are clean, those I make sure they're 100% organic, um, nothing processed. So vegetable oil, it is a processed oil. Um, it is, it's just, I'm, uh, yeah. <laughs> So being again really mindful of of sticking to really really clean oils. Uh, number eleven, low quality protein shakes. So you know there's so many different choices of protein powders and shakes out there, um, and some of them are really great choices, but some of them aren't so great. Um, they're really no different than a processed food or refined sugar. Um, because they have so many different fillers, so much, even, you know, 
it'll say isolate and it's been broke down and stripped down so many different ways. So you really want to be careful that if you are going to partake in any protein shakes,